York Times reports that right-wing activists and politicians who have traveled to the Daring Gap in Panama are interviewing migrants and asking them misleading questions in an effort to make them seem scarier. Immigration has, of course, become a huge issue in the 2020 election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. It now ranks as a top concern for American voters, along with the economy. The Darien Gap is the slice of land in Panama that connects the U.S. to Central America. It has emerged as a treacherous but popular backdoor into the United States. As re was reported by the New York Times over the weekend that GOP operatives are embedding themselves with coyotes to find migrants who hope to enter the U.S. and get them to say what's on their minds. Let's listen to an example. You guys like Ilhan Omar? Yeah, yeah. Why? Say no. Yeah. Uh, because she's one of us. She's Somali, from Somalia. Then... She's one of you. Yeah, she went there by immigration, she, by, like, refugee. Then she became a congresswoman. So... I want to be like her. And here's a little bit more for you. What do you, what do you think? You like Ilhan Omar. What do you think about uh, Joe Biden? Joe Biden? Yeah, of course. He's a good president, too. Yeah. Why? You know, I don't follow the American politi polit politics, but I can see he's a good, a good, a good president. All right, I'm curious to hear what you think about this. It's being framed as by the New York Times as, quote, chasing clicks in the jungle, right-wing influencers descend on the Darien Gap. Yeah. So that was Laura Loomer, who is a um, very right-wing, MAGA, pro-Trump kind of influencer, content creator person. Sure. Um, and gadfly, I would say. Um, the only person she hates more than like the left is Ron DeSantis. Um, <laughs> like she's Ron DeSantis's number one. It's actually kind of funny. It's like a, like um, I, I think she, <laughs> she she was so pro Trump. Like she hates she hates Fox News for you know quote unquote turning on him. Anyway, that's that's what her politics are. It's fine. So she's down there, and she's not the only one who's done this. Other um, kind of MAGA figures have gone down um, to the Darien Gap to interview migrants, and the New York Times was not happy about it. I read this this story, and they're saying that, that you know, it's, uh, it's bad because it's going to give a negative portrayal of these immigrants. You know, they're looking for them to say, like, oh, we love Ilhan Omar, oh, we love Joe Biden, oh, we want to, you know, bring Islamic terrorism to the U.S. or something like that. So, so look, I, I don't think, and the New York Times is saying these are, like, misleadingly edited, and they, if the if the immigrants say something normal or they say they're just not political, then it doesn't make the footage. So look, I definitely think, I, I don't know because I haven't seen, I haven't looked specifically if it's being misleadingly edited. If it is being misleadingly edited, that is bad. And I, I, you know, I think if you do these kinds of interviews and you want to even call yourself kind of some kind of journalist, they should be fair and you should post all of the footage so people can decide for themselves. I don't think the practice of going to interview the migrants is itself bad or suspect or wrong. And there's a little bit of that kind of tone in the New York Times. Maybe it's not my imagination. Like, how dare anyone try to scrutinize who these people are or try to give um, U.S. audiences more of an idea about them? I don't, I don't think that's wrong, but that is not to condone any specific interviewing. Well, I think, well, in all fairness to the New York Times, what they're critiquing is not just the choice to go and interview migrants, but to ask them selective questions that do seem to be designed to generate a certain response on the Internet and has been doing that successfully. So they point out the fact that they asked specifically about Ilhan Omar and Joe Biden, not about the hundreds of other members of Congress. You heard in the response that the fellow says, I don't really follow. American politics, so I don't know that much about Joe Biden, but he yeah. seems like a nice guy. And I think that's fine. And that is then fine. being spun, though, into a uh, online post with a caption that read, Somali illegal aliens proclaim support for Ilhan Omar and Joe Biden inside Panama migrant camp, and that apparently amassed 2 million views on X. Now, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to see what's going on here. You want to create the perception, right, whether it's accurate or inaccurate, that migrants be, are coming to the United States because of Joe Biden, because they like Joe Biden, because they like Ilhan Omar, and to generate ire against both of those figures and create an implication, create a presumption that if Joe Biden and, uh, sorry, that if uh, Donald Trump and Republicans were in charge, then immigration would decline. No? 
I mean, yeah, I just, just now is that what? journalism or is that propaganda? Well, I mean, it's opinion journalism. It's it's. I mean, it's is not misrepresenting what these people say. Okay, those are spicier headlines than are justified. Fine. I, no, I wouldn't describe that as propaganda. I mean, it's propaganda when the government does it, right? It's this is a this is a political activist asking questions of migrants. I think it's fine to do that, and you can decide for yourself. I don't approve, obviously, of misleading videos or edited or if you know she's only picking people who look scary or only like you know 22 year olds or something who are of the demographic that could be terrorists or something yeah i think well, look, that's bad but Lord Loomer, uh, has described herself described herself as a proud islamophobe uh she's called muslims savages and has called islam a cancer she then chooses to go and find immigrants from somalia to and ask them whether or not they are fans of one of the only Muslim women in Congress. They say that they are because just like them, she's an immigrant from a conflict-torn country that's found incredible success in the United States of America. Why wouldn't they like her? Why wouldn't they admire that okay, kind of fine. a Horatio then Alger fine story? It's fine. Right. But the question is, is Lauren Loomer's, Laura Loomer's selective misrepresentation of this as a threat to American life, to find an immigrant who thinks someone else's immigrant story is aspirational, a problem. Is she going and interviewing Ukrainian immigrants of whom we let an unprecedented number into the country because of that conflict, because of Russia's invasion well, of Ukraine. I doubt she would like that very much either. And Well, but she's not interviewing those people. She's not interviewing other kinds of immigrants. And given well, how she's self-described... Sneaking in. Given her self-description as a proud Islamophobe, I think it's completely fair to ask the question of whether or not her own biases and prejudices are motivating this as opposed to a sincere investment and yeah. in what's best for the United States and of as America. I, as I said, her, her number one reigning prejudice is against Ronda. Santis. Well, that's so not the, that's not, not a, an issue here. A, let's let's talk about what's at issue here. What issue is that issue here? She's not interviewing Ron DeSantis fans. She frankly didn't ask, as far as we know, any of those immigrants what they thought about Ron DeSantis or anybody else within the GOP. She specifically sought out and interviewed Somali migrants about one of what two Muslims in Congress, and packaged that as a clip showing that that was described as. Somali illegal aliens proclaim support for Ilhan Omar and Joe Biden inside Panama migrant camp. I mean, do, do you doubt do you doubt what the goals of that kind of a framing are? No, it's uh, it certainly leans in a sensational direction. But if people I mean, the truth is, there are a lot of people in America who are concerned about illegal immigration and don't want us to don't want a lot of people from Somalia or really anywhere else sneaking into the country. And like, that's their view. So people are like, I may not agree with it, but that's the view of people in the country. So yeah, it's, I think, not, it's not like I can't, it's not me trying to shape that. That's just generally how people feel. And I think people are very rightly, people are more right leaning on immigration. This emerges in the polling showing how many more people in the country trust Trump over Biden on this issue specifically. Yes, and I think that making the case that be afraid that there will be more Ilhan Omars is a pr pretty thinly veiled um, attack on not just Ilhan Omar's beliefs, whatever they are. You could ask them about her substantive policy agenda and see if those people agree or disagree with her as, a, as that. But they... They are basically foregrounding her identity as a Somali American, finding Somali Americans who like her and identify with her as an immigrant. Well, she speaks then, up about. I mean, she consciously identifies herself as a. She talks about how important her Somali loyalty is to her and making things better for Somalis specifically. I mean, that's an issue she, when she talks, right? I mean, the, among many other things that she does as a congressperson. So, if the question is. Do we hate Ilhan Omar because of her identity? I think definitionally that's bigoted. That's prejudice. That's bias. Those are negative values that most people don't like to align themselves with. Of course, Lauren Loomer is different. She proudly identifies as an Islamophobe. And it's difficult for me to read that out of a story like this. Yeah, I don't have any particular affection for Laura, uh, Laura Loomer. I just don't think it's wrong to ask the people flooding our country what they think about politics just as... Anyone in the mainstream media goes to how many a video goes to Trump rallies and asks people people and gets them to say all sorts of kooky things and turns it into 
endless video content to scare you about what the deplorable next door thinks about politics. I mean, this is pretty standard practice. Yeah, though. except for here, these immigrants didn't say anything violent and they didn't say anything hateful. They said, oh, yeah, I think Ilhan Omar seems nice. I think Joe Biden seems nice. And that's being spun as something Americans should be afraid of. So if the content of their words aren't actually violent or aggressive or fearful, what is the implication of what is scary about what comes out in that interview? I just leave it to audiences to decide that. I don't don't find it scary, but that's 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 up to you. All right, it's up to you, viewers. Stick around. We've got more rising for you coming up. Next.